In this video, we will be solving drawing 1-5, the adjusting arm. We're going to start with a new TD template. And the first thing we want to do is draw a box around our entire drawing and locate all of the center points. Now, I know that the height of my drawing is 4.50 inches. I know that the width of 7 inches goes from the left side to the center point of my circle, but I need to add the rest in up to the end of the circle. Now, I have a radius of 1.25 inches. Now that radius goes from our center point to the outside edge anywhere along here including straight out to the right. So from my center line out towards the right all the way to the end is an additional 1.25 inches. So I can take 7 plus 1.25 which gives me 8.25 inches width by 4.5 inches height. So I'm going to start here with a line 8.25 4.5 height and create a box. Now I know that every part of my drawing has to go inside of that box. So let's come back through and put these center marks in. This green center mark goes all the way through the middle. So let's start with that one. And throughout this drawing I'm going to be adding and trimming some lines and stuff and at this point we're just trying to lay everything out so it's not a big deal if uh, they're not in the correct layer um, that you know we're drawing everything in the object layer at this point it doesn't matter too much if I take a look here I have my first vertical center line 1.25 inches in from the side so I'm going to offset and I'm just going to type in offset and that's going to put it down in my command line I'm going to hit enter and that's going to allow me to specify my distance 1.25 enter select my line and we'll go over 1.25 jump over to our drawing. Our next line is two inches away from the previous line and then we have 2.5 inches. So I'm going to offset two inches and then offset 2.5 for the next one and that leaves us with two and a half inches. Now to double check some of these measurements I use the distance tool located at the top. I can select that by left clicking one time. The command line tells me to specify my first point so I can pick this point here. Then it tells me to specify a second point and I can click anywhere else and that's going to give me the distance of that line two and a half inches. If I jump back over to my drawing I could say that if this was two and a half inches plus another two and a half is five plus another two is seven and that gives me this measurement. So I was able to double check it and make sure my measurements were correct. So I have the placement of all of my center marks and all of my outside lines and I know that everything I'm going to be drawing 
has to go inside of that box. So let's start with this large circle on the end. I have my center point. I have a radius of 1.25. So on my drawing, I'm going to come up here and do a circle with a center point and a radius. So my center point is here. Now I could either just come out to the outside and click uh, and have it snap to that, or I could actually type in 1.25 enter. That puts that circle in there. The inside circle, we have a diameter of 1.5. Now the difference between these two markings, R stands for radius, meaning just from the center point to the outside, and this little circle with the line through it means diameter, which is all the way across the circle. Now anytime on these type of drawings that you have a full circle, you always will see a diameter dimension. Anytime you have a partial circle or an arc or a piece of a circle, you'll have a radius measurement. So right now we want a diameter of 1.50. I'm going to come up here to my circle tools. I'm going to do a circle center diameter. And we're going to select that same point, 1.5 enter. And that one looks pretty good. Let's jump back over here. Let's do this large circle on the back side with this center point. We have a radius of 1.25, again, because that's only part of a circle. circle with a radius 1.25 and again anything outside of the box is going to be trimmed off as well as I'm going to come back and trim off some of these other pieces. If I want to clear things up a little bit I can go ahead and trim some of these lines off and that kind of helps me make make it my object a little bit more clear as I progress along. So we have this circle here. Okay, so we need to do a little angled line. We are coming over half an inch and we're coming down a half an inch and that will give us our points for our line that we want to draw at 45 degrees. Now you have to keep in mind which way you're drawing the line from. Let's get rid of these here. If you are drawing the line from this top point over straight to the left is 180 degrees. If you're going down 45 degrees you want to subtract 45 degrees from the 180 degree all the way to the left. If you are drawing the line from the bottom point, straight up is 90 degrees, and we're going to come back 45 degrees, so we're going to subtract 45 from 90, which would give us a 45 degree angle. Because if you remember, straight to the right is zero, straight up and down is 90 degrees. On my drawing, I'm going to be using my O track command where I don't actually click on the point. I just make the mouse pointer touch it and pull the mouse down. And that gives me that O track dotted line. 0.5 enter, which will start that a half inch down. I'm going to go upward at a 45 degree angle. And sometimes it will snap exactly where you want it. Sometimes it'll get a little goofy and, and won't be exactly how you want it. In those cases it's better just to pull it a little bit too long and then trim that off. And That's what I'm going to do in this case just so I make sure I have everything correct. Let's go ahead and trim off these pieces that we don't need. And I don't want to measure and mark this bottom part so I'm going to take my top line, I'm going to select my mirror command just by typing in mirror, a little shortcut, hit enter. 
the first point of my mirror line is going to be this horizontal center line. Then I'm going to pull it straight across somewhere and that will put it down below. No, I don't want to erase my source object, so I'm going to press enter. And then I'm going to come back and trim off these little pieces. Okay, so now we have where our circle on the right flows smoothly into this horizontal line. So this line is tangent to the circle. And that tangency is located at the very top of that circle. Because my O snap settings are set to connect to quadrants of circles, I can easily connect to the top of that circle and pull that straight to the left. And we'll do that again for the bottom. And to clean this up a little, let's trim off those pieces. So now I need to do this line here. And I don't know how far over it is to get to this point. I do know this point, however. And I do know that this is a radius of one inch. And a radius goes anywhere from the center point, which is identified in green, along here, which means straight up from my where my center line connects to my object is one inch, this distance here. Likewise, over here would be one inch as well. So this is a radius of one inch. So let's do a circle with a radius of one inch. And we can trim off these extra pieces that we don't need. I'm going to take this arc and I'm going to mirror and trim off some more of these pieces here. Okay, making progress. Let's do the center point here. We already found the center points for this shape. We are one inch apart which means from that center point to the top line would be a half an inch. That also tells us that the diameter of these circles, if this was a whole circle, would be one inch because that goes straight all the way from the top all the way to the bottom of this shape. So I could make one inch circles on each side and then connect a line tangent to the top point and the bottom point, or I could offset my center line a half an inch. There's 10 different ways to do it, and you just kind of pick the way that works the best for you. So let's do a one inch diameter circle, another one inch, whoop, another one inch diameter circle. And we're going to connect our lines. And let's go through and trim off all of this stuff that we don't need. All right, so we have our shape. And we know that it is correct. And the last thing that I want you to add is the center marks. And as we progress through these drawings, you're going to be adding more and more information. Uh, the center marks will help a builder or a machinist uh, locate the various points on this object. So for this drawing, we're going to go ahead and add in the center marks. To do that, I'm going to find my center point and put these lines back in. And I'm going to extend them just a little bit beyond 
the object. And this one will go all the way up here. Now you do want to be careful. You don't want your center lines to touch your object because then you don't know when the object ends and when the center lines begin. Now, right now I'm just in the object layer, putting these marks in just to place them. I'm gonna double check and make sure I have them all here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, it looks like I'm pretty good on my center marks, okay? So this is how we turn these lines into center marks. I'm going to select all of the lines, and I'm gonna come up here to my layer menu. Right now I'm in the object layer, and I'm going to select center line, and then escape to deselect those, and that puts those in my center line layer. Now you will notice that if you compare these drawings, my center lines on the original drawing have a nice little plus sign in the center, and there's a little gap, and then the rest of the line. On your drawing, it doesn't look as clean. And we're gonna work with this later, but for the purpose of this drawing, I just want you to understand how to put center marks in and make sure that those center lines are in the correct center line layer. And it, you can distinguish them between the object line layer. And at this point, we are done with this drawing. Let's save this drawing as Olson 1-5. And of course, you would use your last name and we are ready to plot this drawing out.